past two years, I have gone from a struggling Hello World programmer into a fully fledged software engineer, having worked in the industry professionally, as well as now building my own real startup projects. So now that it's more than two years since I started, I wanted to delve deeper into this entire journey to give you a full chronological breakdown of how I started and what I've been learning at each stage of my journey. Because as much as these past two years have been life-changing, they've also included some of the most difficult moments of my life, from struggling with imposter syndrome and having to master extremely difficult skills with my back against the wall. And throughout this video, I will also share the three major changes that I would make if I was to go through this journey again that could have honestly allowed me to reach what my real goals with programming are in just one year instead of two. But first we need to go back to the beginning, to May of 2020. But before we go into the story, I want to talk about something tremendously important that I've learned throughout my software engineering journey, and that is security. How many of you or your colleagues are still saving your passwords in notebooks or sticky notes or something of that sort? That used to be me. And my team. And this is exactly where today's sponsor, NordPass Business Password Manager, comes in. In business, time is money. So that is precisely why NordPass Business is not only secure, but also convenient. It allows you to store all your credentials in one secure place in such a way that your team can have access to them at the same time with just one click. For example, just according to this one study, employees spend a total of 11 hours a year just resetting passwords, which literally leads to millions of dollars of costs every single year for big businesses. And this is precisely the kinds of costs that NordPass Business Password Manager can save for your business. You can try NordPass Business in action now with a three month free trial at nordpass.com slash internet made coder using the code internet made coder thank you for nordpass business for sponsoring this video and making this video possible and now let's get into our story so whenever you're choosing a field or career to get into it's really important to know that field is right for you and this is something that I wish I knew when I was first picking my career. And in my past, I simply didn't do this. I was studying economics, and at the time, the career that I first chose was a lot less based on what I actually wanted, but rather on what everyone else thought that I should be doing, which was the financial industry. I still so vividly remember the day when I left my six-month placement at Citibank in Finland with six months left of my university degree being like, well, shit. This literally cannot be my life because I had hated that internship so much. But I'm so glad that this happened because had I not hated it so much, I might have never made the leap. And the reason I decided to essentially abandon everything that I've been going for for the past like four years was for a couple of reasons. Firstly, the realization I came to is that my eventual goal was never gonna be to just work for a company. So essentially, I wanted to be able to learn skills that could eventually allow me to start my own business and to work for myself, basically. And after literally months of research, I determined that one of the absolute best skills to learn if you want to build a company from scratch in this day and age is computer programming. So I chose to become a software engineer. And I have to tell you that what followed was some of the most exciting months of my life, like literally. I would wake up every day just excited to learn the next thing about programming. I started with the Python programming language using this course called Python for Everybody. After I had learned the basics of programming, I picked up the Odin project to teach me web development because I figured that most of the jobs were in web development. So I probably wanted to learn that if I wanted to get a job as fast as possible. After that, I started completing courses like CS50 to not only teach me programming, but to start giving me the foundation of computer science itself. But amidst all of this excitement, I had a bit of a problem. I had no idea how I could turn these skills that I was learning into an actual job. I didn't have a computer science degree. I hadn't done like a formal boot camp or anything like this. I didn't have any background in this field. Why would anyone hire me? And the thing is, I had just finished my degree. This was in like July of 2020 and the clock was ticking because I was gonna no longer have student loans or student benefits or anything like that to fall back on. So I needed to find a job somewhere, somehow. So in the summer, I had a consulting internship at this company called Deloitte that I had coming up. So basically the way that it works with these big company internships is that they basically hire you for like a month. And if you do well, you get a return offer to come back to the company. The problem is most of the time, they will only hire you back to the exact role where you were interning for. Then I learned that this company and this specific division that I was in at this company was specifically a technology consulting company, essentially meaning that they were like building websites and doing 
doing software delivery projects to their clients, meaning that they also had software engineers in their payroll. So I was like, hmm, if they hire software engineers and I can just convince them that I'm really into programming and that I have a lot of passion and potential for it, maybe they would be willing to give me a return offer as a software engineer instead. So that is what I did. I worked super hard and I essentially convinced them of my passion and potential for programming. And in the end, they ended up giving me a return offer as a software engineer. So now suddenly, only like four months after I started learning programming, I had my first foot in the door in the industry, which was just like literally felt like winning the lottery. The only problem was I still felt like a complete fraud because I had only been learning for a couple of months. I did not feel like I was ready. Luckily for me, their 2021 intake was actually full. So they gave me the return offer to return as a software engineer for next year. So essentially a year after that. So basically the situation was for me, I had a full year to basically get good enough at programming to be able to do well as a junior software engineer for this new company. So for the next year, I went back to Finland to my hometown. So, and I just basically went full time into just learning to code every single day because I basically had to master like all of these things on my own. I started learning computer science. I built myself this entire self-taught computer science degree curriculum. And I've actually made this complete curriculum available to you, which you can access if you sign up to my newsletter below. I learned things like data structures and algorithms. I learned about computer architecture, about all the theory and all of this. And this was the first mistake that I made. I spent way too much time learning about the theory when really what I should have been doing is just focusing on the practice, picking up project after project after project to actually get good at programming, not just about like knowing all of these underlying details as interesting as they were. But I did obviously also learn about the programming. I learned a bunch of different languages. I went into JavaScript more. I started building a lot of web development projects. I dabbled in mobile development. I dabbled in like lower level programming, data science, machine learning. But the thing is, having been so focused on just this one goal of getting good enough to start my job, I'd really neglected a lot of other things. And as I started my job, some problems started to come in. So my dream software engineering job finally started in September of 2022. And the first impressions were great. The work was interesting. I was learning a lot. We even had like a full, a couple of weeks bootcamp. The hours were good, which allowed me to still work on my side hustle, which at this point was this YouTube channel, which was more and more becoming a very, very serious business. The project that I was placed in at my job was based in Java microservices. Essentially, I learned a lot about microservices architecture. I learned about most importantly, how to work in a big team as a programmer, how real software developers actually work, what actually makes for a good software developer. Even though this was technically a backend role, most of my time was actually working on the front end side on this client portal that we were building using React. So during this job, I really ended up becoming proficient in Java and in React and in a lot of these developer tools like Kubernetes, Docker. But but then I also started learning a lot of things that I hadn't really expected. And so the reality really started to sink in. Like while I was learning a lot, I was first of all not learning nearly as much as I thought I would. I was very, very siloed into a specific part of this project. And the thing that I really wanted to learn was to just build stuff from scratch, to think about also the business side because of like entrepreneurship is the real passion that I have. And like obviously being this like small cog in this machine machine, you learn a lot of details about the specific things that you're doing, but you're not necessarily exposed to these higher level things and specifically like how something like this gets built from the ground up. And this is actually the second massive mistake that I made that I wish I would have changed. I wish I would have actually spent time prior to starting this job, actually think about what kind of company do I want to work for? What would be the best fit for my personality? Would I prefer this stable corporate big environment or this more dynamic and less certain startup environment? Which had I done that, I would have probably realized that for me, maybe going to work for a startup might have been a much better fit. So I realized that I did have to quit. And again, a long story short, because I had sort of neglected learning data structures and algorithms and coding interviews, I had to give myself a, basically a crash course on this stuff while also working my job, while making these YouTube videos. But then during this process, I also realized that, okay, wait a minute. My real goal at the end of the day is to become an entrepreneur. And I'm already kind of an entrepreneur with this YouTube channel. So why would I keep working a job at all when I can just make my living with this channel while 
just starting to program the kinds of projects that I want to build to give me the skills to found my own tech startup. So then that is exactly what I did. So I left my job and moved to Dubai to work on my first ever startup project, which is essentially this personal finance application. And this was the moment when the real learning started to come in. It turns out that if you want to learn about how to build projects from scratch, the best way to do that is actually to just build projects from scratch. Who would have thought? So I started building this application around January and was working on it loosely for around two, three months. I was building the front end in React, utilizing the experience that I had got from my job. At the back end, I went back using my main language, Python, using their Django framework. I was learning even more about APIs and specifically these APIs that you can use to link bank accounts and all these kinds of things. And mainly the, the biggest thing that I was learning throughout this process was simply the process of coming up with ideas. Also with the help of my business coach back here because really what makes for a great app is not about the code it's about the problem that you're solving does it have the core things that the customer might actually want so just learning to think through this mindset has honestly been the biggest thing that i have been learning so far the project has now been on hold for like a couple of months though because first of all i decided to focus more on this content creation business i started taking on coaching clients and i also started building out my course i wanted there to be a course that would basically give you what a full booth camp gives you as in it teaches you not only how to code but also how to get a job using these coding skills but where you don't have to pay the price point of a full boot camp because let's face it not all of us can afford that and put everything into one package that's now available it's called python developer masterclass you can check it out down in the description and use the code i am web for 15 percent off so that's there if you're interested so while i've been working on this course which is so much work by the way I haven't actually been coding that much other than the actual projects and things I add in the actual course. And now going into, I guess, my third year of programming, I actually have something very, very exciting coming up. But before I tell you what that is, the third mistake that I just wish I did pretty much straight away, which is to just focus on building from the start. I wish I realized that it's possible to just take an idea, start working on them, like literally after you've just learned the basics of coding. Number one, that's gonna be way more exciting because you actually have a tangible thing that you're trying to build. And number two, it's gonna be a more effective way of learning because the only way you really learn is through practice and by doing, by making lots of mistakes. So I really, really wish I did that much sooner, which is precisely what I am finally going to be again, focusing more on going forward because, drum roll, I'm co-founding a startup. While I now know how to build projects on my own, building a full like real startup with an even bigger ambition with other people and with a full team, I thought would be number one, even more motivating and just even more fun than just building my own projects. But also it just seemed like the logical next step to make in my software engineering career. So I cannot wait to get started on that. Either way, make sure to subscribe because a bunch of updates are gonna be coming up on the channel. So if you wanna see that, hit that subscribe button. So that is a brief history of my two years of coding. There's obviously a lot of details that I left out because I didn't wanna make this video like a million hours long. So if you wanna hear more details on how exactly I went from zero to getting my first software engineering job in just four months, you can watch this video. If however, you want more detail on my decision to leave my job to pursue the unknown world of entrepreneurship full time, you can watch this video. And so yeah, watch one of these next and I'll see you in the next one.